Good afternoon. This is Candy with the conference call on uh, uh, May 30th, 2015. We are doing the Free the Colonies conference call with uh, Chris and Elizabeth and our other friends joining with folks around the world as connected through COBRA and the 2012 portal dot blogspot dot com. So uh, even if you're listening to us after this afternoon, do uh, take a moment to, to uh, sit in meditation and prayer for the star people that are trying to help us. Chris, are you with us? Yes, I am here. Yes, I am here. Great. Okay. Well, uh, it's uh, almost uh, 4.11. People are trying to do this at 11.11 and 11 minutes after the hour, all through the globe. Uh, So, um, Elizabeth, did you have another suggestion also before we do the uh, Law of One? Oh, I just I had to get off and get back on, but we're going to do this meditation first, and then we'll do a clearing for the cell phones and all the Internet, and welcome everybody from around the world, like Candy says. And today is Candy. <laughs> That's a sign in a wonder makes you wonder. Today is Candy, Candy, so roll with it, girl. It's going to be a sweet, a sweet uh, uh, day uh, throughout the, the universe as we do this clen- cleansing and clearing. Um Okay. Sweet and so, yummy, 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 yummy to the tummy and the whole body and the whole earth. Yes. Okay, go for it. Absolutely. We want to bring in the positive and happy. And and as Anastasia and Ross teaches, we want to be joyous. And that's the way to, to pull up our energy and our light is to uh, sh- share our joy, love the uh, animals, love the plants and flowers, and love each other. Well, everybody, let's uh, get ready. We're going to be doing this uh, short meditation. We're we're going to be uh, dedicating the Law of One today towards um, the clearing of the colonies that that are uh, having taken some of the humans and, and others there to be slaves and to work their colonies on on Mars and, and other places. And this is what we're dedicating the Law of One today. And I think I'll just ask the group, you know, we'll just, I'll start it and, and, uh, and let's repeat after me. And so everybody take a deep breath. Become centered, release all the cares of your world. Because together we are all one. We are all one. We are all one. We are all one. We are are all one. When one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is harmed, all are harmed. When one is helped, all are helped. When one is held, all are held. Therefore, in the name of who I am, therefore, therefore, in the name of who I am, who I am, am. and I am one with all. And I am one with all. I am one with all. With all. I ask that in this situation, only that which is the highest good. I ask I that in this, in this situation, situation that only the highest good of all concern, all concern happens. All concern happens. Here and now. Here and and now. I give Here. thanks Here. that this Here. is done. And I give thanks, I give this, thanks is done. that this is done. And this is done. So be it. So be it. So be it. And as it's done in this situation, we're asking that any other situations known and unknown to us of a similar nature anywhere in creation also have it done for them too. So be it. And and we ask that 
uh, every situation on this call today, the meditation we do, the clearings of the cell phones, the Internet that we do for the whole world, the highest good of all concern happen, and we call in the 360 angels that are assigned to each degree around the 360 circumference of the earth. We call in the Silver Legion. We call in the Raw Group. We call in all the alliances out there for this Golden Age changes to love conquers all and the love revolution. Anybody? We call you in. We call in our higher selves of collective consciousness. We call in our multidimensional selves of collective consciousness. And uh, I want to add Franco Di Nicolo. I call him in, too, and add him to the highest good of all prayer today. Thank you. So be it. So it is. And this is a test. And we are going to pass this test. And we want to call in uh, our personal ancestors and and um, our families, it, even if they're not with us, may their higher self be with us and in, in join. Okay. And the Atmospherians, the Ethereans, the Orions, we want all of the highest light, the highest good to be here with us. And we, and we call in all of our guides that are listening live now and that will listen. Absolutely, and we give thanks to uh, them and the birdmen and, and all all of the beings that have been helping us. And and so now, uh, would uh, would would Chris like to uh, lead any uh, meditation or clearing or or you know I'm t- I'm turning this over to you mostly, Chris. Okay, uh, have, I haven't led one before, but I'll see what I can do here. Okay. The way I do this is get to that cent- that center is just by merely being in the moment. You focus on just being there. You breathe in and out, breathe in the light and out the shadows. And this is how I focus on what I am doing. So we do this for a few seconds. All right, now what I will begin going into what I see with the uh, Martian colony. And I'm being fo- uh, being focused on the uh, monolith. And let's see what I can see here. Uh, I see this tall monolith it's on phobos it looks like there's a sandstorm going on of some sort it's in the middle of a desert and the light is very dim but but i I think it's a spaceship that's causing i think it's nighttime there and uh, there's a spaceship surrounding this monolith and i'm seeing people in a line being led into this monolith like it's a uh, like a big prison cell and let's see I was told the monolith was actually supposed to be a good thing but I think it's being used by the cabal in a bad way so let's see here it looks like it used to be some kind of stop off uh, station or like a almost like a temple but it's being used just as a uh, prison building it looks like so what I'm doing and what we can all do is surround that monolith in light the same thing with the spaceship that's hovering around it same thing with the people that are being led in it and they're all human from the looks of it every person there is human so what I'm doing is focusing this large beam of light into like the shape of a markaba and i am taking this almost kind of like a bullseye and i'm taking all these these points of light and surrounding the the monolith and all through every corridor it goes underground too so uh to a big temple like area where i'm seeing other people and they all can feel this. The whole monolith is lighting up inside. 
So if everybody wants to focus on that, that would be uh, that would be good. And I'm seeing other points of light where others are focusing. And seeing, I don't know who in the group tonight is doing this, but I'm seeing a bunch of, I'm seeing like almost like a spilling out of like hearts and flowers that are going all over the surface of Phobos. And it looks like Phobos in itself is lighting up. And it's almost like golden shimmers are going through Phobos. And it's carrying over to... Uh, it looks like it's carrying over to Mars itself. And I'm seeing the, these underground colonies of, of aliens, humans... It's almost it's almost identical to the moon base situation with like like they're trading and doing a scientific research and all that. But the humans that are being kept or were being are being kept in the, the monolith are being taken to Mars itself to be worked on. And I see other aliens there. These other aliens are actually seeing me now. Just a group of them. And they're pointing out to somebody else that I'm looking. And it looks like the men in black are there too. I'm seeing the, the classic look with the suits, the fedora, the sunglasses. And uh, there's one, two, three, four, five of them, it looks like. Six of them. And it looks like they are trying to mentally come at me. So... What I'm going to do is do the same as I did to the monolith. Use this Markaba shape to, the star shape to surround them and bind them with light, energy, and making that the symbol is constantly and eternally pumping them full of light. And it uh, looks like they are trying to resist it, but cannot. And they are, looks like they are back in. They look like they tried to follow me and push me out to space. But they couldn't do it. And now they're back on the, they're on the floor of the uh, Martian colony. And they're, looks like they are shaking. It looks like they couldn't handle the energy influx. And uh, they are kind of, they're now getting back up, but they're not the same as they were. They're not in the men in black suits anymore. It looks like that was a hologram of some sort. And I see there are a variety of different aliens. Like I see a fish man, and I see uh, other species. It looks like the fish man is looking at me. And I'm seeing a... Serpo Gray in there, and uh, he looks confused, and I'm seeing several others that looks like they, they had been put in that Men in Black form, but now they're free of it, and other aliens are standing around looking at them, and then now they're all looking at me, like the ones that didn't expect that to happen. And one of them I just heard say, uh, say, how? How did that happen? How did this happen? And he, uh, let me see here. Uh, let me let me tell him how. Love. Love conquers all. We love you. Yes, and this alien, he uh, he looked like he's he's fish person, but uh, no, he's saying no. He's a... Uh, he says he's a type of reptilian, but he's different than the other. Looks like he, he calls himself an agress. And I've heard of this term before, that they're much older than the Drago. But they this one meant no harm. He was actually stuck. And uh, the men in black had captured him decades ago, it looks like, and turned him into one of those iconic looking men in black and uh he's uh he's uh kind of bowing but putting his hands together and he's saying saying thank you and uh 
and it looks like I'm seeing others in the men in black uniforms kind of approaching, wondering what happened. So I'm doing the same to them. I'm doing them using this Markaba symbol to bind them uh, with all these like feelers and beams of light coming out of it. And I'm doing it to every one of them on the Martian colony. I'm not going to let any more show up like that. And uh, they, they're they trying to run, to, and others are trying to run in to stop it. But they're trying to kind of pack into this area thinking in numbers they can stop this. But uh looks like they are, some other ones are beaming in from other places. And this point of light is stretching back over to Phobos and the moon, other moon, Demonos. And it looks like there was a, pr a prison colony on Demonos as well, on a different level somewhere. And it's stretching over to there, and it's binding the two moons uh, and making it so that uh, looks like there's another uh, complete uh, colony everywhere on Demonos. And uh, it's completely black, but uh, it's even taking any of the ships that are around there and binding them. I've programmed this Markaba symbol to expand exponentially and keep growing. The more they resist, the more it grows. And it, it's encompassing the entire uh, planet. And it's uh, wrapping this like this rope around all of it. It's beam. And it's stretching out. Okay, now it's following a trail back to the uh, brown dwarf star, the dual sun. Or as Michael told me, it's called the midnight sun. And it looks like these, looks like uh, looks like Mars, Demonos, and Phobos are being directly affected by this. And it is completely wiping over these shimmers I see coming out of the other sun are energizing Mars. I see the atmosphere starting to rebuild a little bit. And I see uh, these, these strange gases that are coming off of Phobos and Demonos. And uh, they are being absorbed by that sun, the darker sun and being replaced with uh, these shimmers coming off of it. And all these humans that were on Phobos to start with that had been already enveloped can see these shimmers and they are uh, some of them are falling to their knees and crying other ones are jumping up and down and the chains that were formerly binding them are all falling off and the ship that that was by was by the uh, monolith has now I don't want to say it crashed, but it kind of did, but nobody's nobody's hurt. And the pilots are all coming out all confused. And uh looks like they were solar warden vessels. And but these uniforms are different. These are like black and white with almost like a uh, motorcyclist helmet. And uh these I've never seen these guys before. And I'm, one of them is approaching me. It looks like he was the pilot. And he's trying to do something. He has some kind of magic at his disposal here. And he's saying, well, I don't want to repeat what he's saying, but uh, rest assured it's negative. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do to him what I did to the others. And bind him with this Markava. And it's filling every like orifice with uh, light. And this, this Markava is going inside of him and changing him. It doesn't look like he was human. He's not alien either. It looks like he's a machine. And he's kind of, he looks like a somebody that's on like a motor, uh, not necessarily a Harley motorcycle, but the other kind, like a Yamaha or something like that. But uh, that's kind of how he looks from my perspective. But I can I'm opening his uh, hood on his helmet just to see what he looks like. 
and it looks like he's he's made to look like a reptilian, but he's mechanical. And uh, I th I thought all of them had had uh, died off, but uh, this this being, he said he was on the outer reaches of the system when the other other incident took place. And so I'm taking and binding this light into his system, showing him just what I showed the other ones. Uh, and he is, let me see, he is uh, now pulling his helmet off, and he's falling to the ground, and I can see all of his mechanics changing. His inner guts or workings are changing. And all of his electrodes or whatever you uh, what have you the insides are all these little lit orbs inside of him are turning to, into these lit markavas and not just regular orbs and his insides are filling with different colors too like fairy lights and his programming is changing and he is he gets up and he's kind of, he's sobbing but he's also able to speak and he's he's saying now that he realized what he had done, he is uh, going to fix things. And he looks like he has a sword at his disposal, kind of like a Japanese sword, but different with like little jagged edges on it. And it looks like it turned into a light sword and he, uh, that he could project. It almost looks like a lightsaber, but a normal blade. And he says now he can free the others. And it looks like he's turning against his his masters, and he's going through the he's going. It looks like he has the ability to transport places. So uh, uh, he's going uh, to all these different colonies and shutting them down. It looks like he's going around and freeing everybody. And he's going to his ship, and it looks like he's calling in another one, another robot or android, changing him. It looks like he's interfacing with him. And there, it looks like they're taking all the people and putting them into these two ships that were there. And uh, they're, it they're, looks like they're, they're calling in other ones too. And that programming is spreading to all of them. And it looks like they're turning completely against their masters. And anything, anything that's Men in Black that was in them is gone. And they're going around the colony, the original Martian colony. It looks like they're some of them are transporting back there, taking any men in black that weren't yet transformed and, and uh, changing them back. It looks like they were they were slaves to begin with, like before. It looks like they were aliens and humans alike that were changed. And now I'm seeing some more of those iconic-looking men in black, and they are changing too. And uh, it looks like some of them were robots too. And they are all changing. All their innards are changing. And even the hologram they were using is changing. It's no longer men in black. They have the same clothes, but they're white. And the tie they're wearing is gold. And the hologram itself changed. So expect they, uh, they're saying these, these other machines are saying expect in the future... Some men in black counters will not be men in black, but they'll be the, the men in white. And uh, they'll be wearing su white sunglasses, white fedora, white uh, shirt, and uh, but the tie is gold. And they'll, it looks like it has red, uh, red and pink, uh, like bindings on the tie, like a clip. And everything, even the shoes are white, and it looks like the bottoms are gold, and a little bit of red in there. And they're saying this is what they will look like, the good versions of them will look like now. And they're going to try to find the others and try to fix them too. And let's see. <clears throat> it looks like the programming in a few of them is trying to fight it, but it's not working. And now they're going around and freeing all the people that have been taken. It looks like they're bringing them back to Earth. And yeah, because I've seen a massive ships heading to uh, Earth with all these people that had been bound and chained, and they could instantly get there. It was no time at all. And 
now they're being put back on the Earth's surface, it looks like. <clears throat> and I'm seeing these spaceships that once had these, these robots at their head, and the, even the looks of the ships are, they're golden. Golden with, like, shimmers. And they have a symbol of a, of a sun on the side. Looks like it's the emblem of the, uh, the other star, the dark star. And uh, that had the golden shimmers come out of it. And it has a, like a white point in the center. And with uh, wings coming out the sides. And that looks like it's the new, new Men in Black emblem and the new Android emblem, too. And even their symbol symbolism has changed. Uh, yeah, they everything about them's changed. So they had the ability to morph, so when they got that new programming, they all changed. And there's even spaceships out there that are completely computerized that I'm seeing hidden in, in the darkness. And it looks like they, they're the shape of like almost like a pitchfork. And it looks like these are Drago vessels, but they're not. They're they're machines, artificial intelligence, but there's no pilot there. It's just a computer core, and they look almost like forks. And uh, I can see them changing too. So I could see them hiding in a different dimensional layer behind planets and moons. And this, it looks like all this is encircling the entire solar system. I'm being shown that there are slave worlds all over the place within the solar system. Now it looks like, um, okay, it looks like Tyler's people are around too. It looks like on the outer edge of the solar system. I'd seen something last night that they used uh, Uranus as a, uh, as a base of operations within the solar system. On a different layer, even though Uranus is toxic, uh, a toxic planet. Chris? Uh, yes. Can we include all of these enslaved worlds all around the universe, you said, for the highest good of all concerned in this prayer? Yes, uh, even though some of them have been dealt with from the last time, it looks like there were several on different dimensional layers that we didn't see before. So, uh, yes, we can include them. And uh, let's see, yeah. And it looks like I can see Tyler's people on a different uh, dimensional layer, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, out in that area. As I'm seeing some of his, his ships, I'm seeing another one kind of move in, and I'm seeing a uh, person at the helm. There are two, actually there are two pilots, and a man in a robe standing behind them. And I'm seeing I'm seeing a conical shaped head, which means that's Anunnaki. I'm seeing a uh, okay. This person is female, white robe, white and gold robe, and has a uh, kind of this white, actually a white dress like on, like something you'd expect from like a medieval fantasy type of deal. And I'm seeing almost like a sorceress, but she has a conical shaped head and she has a lot of hair that's uh, wrapped around it, and she is saying her name, let's see what her name is. She's named uh, Zef, Zephyrus, Zephyrus. And she is uh, um, Orion, or Anunnaki. And she's on one of Tyler's people's ships. And she is, let's see, she's heading, it looks like in the direction of Earth. And it looks like there are these two pilots that she's telling them to do something. I don't think these two pilots can see her. And they're on one of these um, other vessels with these motorcycle uh, looking guys. And they're removing their helmets, and she's coming up behind them and infusing them like what I had done to the others. And they are firing something down at the earth that is making it uh, less uh, abrasive, it looks like. And I'm seeing elements of that purple hue that I saw in the future it start to, start to come in. So she's saying expect to see more purple in the atmosphere. 
And I saw a lot of purple last night before sunset, and, and, and it was uh, amazing. And, and for some of you on the line did not hear about Tyler and, and, and the vote that they took after the 24-hour meeting last week to accept our invitation to uh, appear and, and have some contact with humans. that They have not tried that since the 60s. Could you tell us again uh, what uh, Tyler looks like besides his dress? Uh, you know, what's his skin color and things like that? Well, he's uh, more of a – oh, I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to add, Tyler is uh, – belongs on a council in the Ethers, and he is a council of an alliance for the golden age of this universe, multiverse, this earth. Along, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and I, and I, was, and I was told, and I, I'm getting up to this in the David Wilcock episodes, too, where he's talking about Tyler's people, and apparently he belongs to a council called the Council of the Seven Lights. And uh, that's according to David Wilcock, but uh, um, Tyler tells me that he is part of a group called the Human Legion. And he looks like, he, he's Caucasian looking, he has um, blue eyes, brown hair, and uh, he can grow, it's kind of spiked sometimes, he can grow it out at, at will. He can actually grow his hair at will if he wants to. He has that ability. And... Sometimes I see him with long hair, sometimes I don't. And, you know, he has the red red and gold uniform. Uh, this uh, uh, kind of like a maroon color uniform, actually, with a golden sash. And he, uh, I can actually see him right now very clearly. And he's not speaking, I'm just seeing him at the, the helm of a ship. And uh, he did see it, see me briefly. He kind of winked at me as he's going along. Uh, and I see him. He has like this this longer hair now, so I don't know if he if he grew it out immediately or what. And it looks like he's standing on this platform that's going through space. It has a shield around it, but it's a platform with like two other people uh, piloting it. But it's almost like an invisible ship. But he's, I can see the platform is visible. But it's like this bubble is around it, and he's looking at Earth. I can see from his perspective, he's looking right at Earth. Is it? Oh, he just said no. That's not Earth. It was a different world within. Where is this? Oh, he just said he's on his way to Phobos. And the reason Phobos looks similar to Earth now is because of the energy change. He's showing me on a different level. It looks like Earth now. And uh, he said uh, he's giving the thumbs up to everybody, going, good work again. And uh, I see him kind of floating down onto the surface of Phobos. His people are coming down there, and it looks like they are uh, uh, they're, sh they're being shown uh, the dark and the light uh, energies. And it looks like they are going down there and helping to balance. And they're rushing into the uh, monolith to see if there's any people left in there. And he's kind of yelling to me from the surface. He's going, uh, this will be a uh, temple once again. And the natives that used to be there thousands of years ago, there were these like these um, pointy-eared, bald-headed uh, people. They were the ones actually native to Phobos, uh, like how a native tribe would be. And they built the monolith. And it was their main home and temple. They prayed there, ate there, slept there, everything. And he is making sure. I'm asking if there are any of the native Phobos people left. And he says, yes, they scattered to the edges of the world to get away from the cabal. And uh, he is uh, he's calling them back in. And I see several of them coming in and shaking hands with him and hugging his people and everything. And it looks like they're going down and uh, occupying the monolith. And let's see. I asked him if this is the classic monolith that everybody sees, and he's saying, yes, it is. And it's still nighttime there, but that's the actual cycle. It's actually nighttime. It's not darkness like it was before. This It's actual night where you can see the stars and everything. And... Uh, and it looks like uh, Demonos is still, it looks like this opaque black marble. I'm trying to see why this looks this way. And I can't see into Demonos anymore. 
looks almost like a blue and black mar a bluish black marble. And Tyler tells me because it, he says it's in dimensional transition. And I can't see all of it. And he says it'll be that way. It'll seem to disappear from the night sky. Uh, but it's going somewhere else. And let me see here. Yeah, I can see Tyler's people actually more coming more into the solar system. Looks like the Alliance let them through the shield. And I can see in a massive sh uh, set of ships. There's like, if some are spherical, that would be the bird people. And it looks like they're trying to set up a space station all around Jupiter. Because uh, I know there's there are th things there on a different level. There's like this uh, uh, historical records place there that I saw many years ago on a different level. And uh, that tells the species that contributed to the human race. And it looks like he's setting up, uh, his people are setting up shop around Jupiter now. And him with some of the bird people, it looks like they're get, inching their way closer and closer to Earth every time. And let's see, yeah, he, and I'm seeing Saturn too. And it looks like uh, he's, uh, I see a ship of his, uh, his people going along the rings of Saturn. And it's flying through the system. It looks like uh, there. It looks like both the Alliance people and uh, Tyler's people are uh, definitely getting closer. Uh, they show me that. It's uh, there. Uh, he says it, it's not too long now. And let's see. And it looks like uh, my uh, distortion being able to talk to uh, Tyler has cleared up past couple of days I've had had uh, had interference but now he's showing me some beings that I encountered yesterday and the, the day before the night before that that uh, he uh, they to recap on it I had a channeling that was interfered with by talking to one of Tyler's people his name was Cicero and Cicero he was in the process of telling me something about my genetic code and I got cut off, and these other beings that look kind of like armored, like starfish-looking guys show up to try to block my transmission. But now the good ones, ver versions of ones, are there, and they're showing up to talk to Tyler and uh, his people. And it looks like they're entering uh, some of the Alliance ships. It looks like the bird people are coming out. And... They are, even the good ones are kind of rough to talk to. Their frequency is weird. And they, they're going, and they all have these little staffs. They're walking. They, they look, they, they kind of remind me of uh, starfish. But they're walking upright humans. They're just fishy. And, uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, they're going aboard. It looks like some spherical ships to talk to the bird people. And it looks like they want entry into the alliance along with Tyler's people, and it looks like they're being granted that they're being made to take the oath and to never harm anybody. And it looks like even some of the darker ones that were dark before are going there. Oh, my God, Chris. Yeah. Now, me and Chris talked a little bit before the call, and we ended up praying for his blockage with Tyler, and I welcome through the prayer of one all of the people that are, that are still on the other side, not the Alliance. If they like to <laughs> join us, come on with the prayer one. Yeah. And now we're seeing it an hour, less than an hour later, right? Yes, and now they are, uh, looks like they're being welcomed. These, these starfish people are being welcomed into the Alliance. And there are others showing up, too. I'm seeing these big, um, uh, they're kind of pointy. They kind of remind me of Pirates of the Caribbean when you saw Davy Jones's people all like fishy like and everything. Yeah, and they kind of remember. Oh, they kind of remind me of that. Yeah, where they have like all these like starfish protrusions and coral looking things and everything. And uh, some of them I knew were part of the Elemental Code, the Soul Group Elemental Code. But it looks like, oh, I know what I'm seeing. The Elemental Code is joining forces with the Alliance. 
uh, and it looks like they are okay. into. It looks like they are entering into the alliance. All the leprechauns, gnomes, and everybody are part of it now. Oh my God! Hallelujah! What we're seeing is what we call here on Earth the what is it called? The monkey effect, right? The dominoes are falling, oh, you guys. Effect. Oh my God! Domino effect, yeah. Yeah, and they were willing to do that anyway. They were part of the Syrian star being, not, not necessarily the star, Syrian star being soul group, but they came from the same planet. And I'm seeing elementals, everybody going to uh, to uh, the Alliance people. And because a lot of these beings are coming from different levels, so they're having to match frequency with the Alliance people to see them. But I'm even seeing Leprechaun Bremble uh, waving at me. And uh, he is... Uh, uh, to people on here that don't know who Leprechaun Bremble is, he's somebody I met, uh, my mother and my stepfather Laverne met when we moved into our apartment. And uh, he's waving at me, and he's like, he said, uh, he's carrying a staff now, which he normally doesn't do. And he goes, he goes, yes, I do, you just never noticed it. But uh, it looks like this, like, point at the top. Like a triangle or a pyramid that that has all these carvings and stuff in it. And it's a staff that has this ball in the center of it where he's holding it. And, uh, and it looks like uh, he has like almost like armor on him. I've never seen him look like this before where he has like battle armor on. And uh, normally he's wearing like a top coat and shoes like you'd expect a leprechaun to look. And... Uh, and he, he just put the visor down on a helmet. It looks like one of those medieval helmets where it has the flip visor on the front that looks almost like a duck bill. And uh, what you think of when you think of a knight in shining armor. Yeah, but his armor is gold and blue and silver. And and he's him and all the leprechaun people looks like they're kind of floating through space in like these little bubbles, and they're going towards the... Uh, uh, the Alliance people, and it looks like the, the it looks like they're trying to build a space station uh, on Jupiter. I can see this huge ringed space station, and there looks like they're taking power directly from the two suns to do it, and uh, they're merging the energy of the the two suns and building around them. It looks like, and. Uh, Let's see, and it looks like this power is being reflected over to Earth, too. So if people at some point don't see soul, our normal sun, anymore, the energy will still be going there for, like, the plants and everything. And uh, even if all they see is the dimmer sun. And uh, I'm being shown two different time frames. It looks like this uh, this anchor or whatever they're using is uh, it's anchored in two different time frames. And... They're just basically showing me that past, present, and future, all three different triumphs are one. And uh, all of them are in the moment. So it looks like, uh, like I said, definitely all this is going to be visible fairly soon. Now, soon to them might not be for years for us, but uh, they said relatively it's soon. And... Uh, Oh, uh, I'm I'm seeing I'm still seeing Bremble. He is uh, showing me us, you know, here on Earth right now. And he says he's showing me a different layer where his people usually operate on, and it's they're still all there. But he's showing me all the leprechauns and gnomes are all in these armor, well, these little suits of armor. Even these little hairy guys, like you can see the hair kind of protruding out of it. You know, it looks like uh, like you'd expect Gossamer to look in the um, in the cartoons when he put on the suit of armor to get Bugs Bunny. He kind of looks kind of looks like that with the hair sticking out of the joints and stuff. But because uh, some of the gnomes are hairy, and uh, let me see. Here. Yeah, they are. They're just showing me that they're they're preparing for something big. They wouldn't be armored like this if there wasn't something huge. And they said they are protecting the earth and the people from somebody. I'm trying to hear this uh, name that he's trying to give me. Oh, the uh, the name I mentioned earlier, Agress. Agress. And uh, the name I, may, I, I, uh, I mentioned another name on the radio shows uh, earlier called Telenorian. 
and the Telenorians are kind of nasty buggers. They uh, uh, they have super strength and super powers and all that. So these uh, they're trying to protect us from who? Which names? Those two uh, names you just mentioned. They're, they're two, they're the first name was the Agress, almost like aggressive, but it's Agress, which is appropriate, and against the Telenorian. Okay, let's just pause right there. I would like to Cynthia to come in and let's pray for these two groups. Absolutely. For the law of one. Mm-hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Oh good. I wasn't sure if I was on star six or not. Okay, let's do it. Um everybody just relax and take a deep breath. And we are calling in every single being affected by all the scenario that we're seeing here, all that we see and understand, and all that we don't, that which is visible and that which is invisible, because we're all one being. Whether we see it or know it or understand it or believe in it, if it exists, it's part of the one being, and we are all part of the one being, and it's affecting us. And if if one is helped, it affects everybody else. And when one is harmed, it affects everybody else on any level. So therefore, in the name of who we all are, and we are all one with all there is, we ask that only the highest good of all concerned happen. And we give thanks that this is done with maximum efficiency and minimum effort and the highest good of all the children. And we ask that it be through all time and through all space. And we ask that this prayer continue and be expanded into infinity because we are all one. And we give thanks that this is done. So be it. And so it is. Absolutely. And we just send love to to Chris and Tyler and the leprechauns and and, 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 uh, joyfully. and, And we... We send love to the Telemarians and the Argus because mm-hmm. they are part of the one. Okay. Absolutely. So, Chris, kid, those two groups that the leprechauns are apparently thought we were in danger from, that mm-hmm. we just, us humans, took dominion on earth mm-hmm. and prayed the law of one and sent love to them through the prayer one. Do you see anything going on, any effect with those two? Yeah, groups? I'm seeing, you know, uh, Brimble is pointing towards the sky, and he's saying, that I'm seeing uh, the Telenorians are these large monk-looking guys in multicolored robes and pale skin and blue eyes, and I'm seeing one of them in the sky that is uh, coming down to... Uh, talk to the leprechauns and they're pointing the spears at him but he's raising his hands up and they said this is uncharacteristic for one of his people that they normally just uh, blow things up and be done with it but uh, he's actually landing and with he has bare feet and everything he's he he's he looks like a monk uh, but the robe is multicolored it looks like a patchwork multicolored and he is, I can see, I'm looking at him in the face, and I can see that he is crying. And uh, and then Brimble goes, hey, they normally don't do that. And uh, and I'm seeing other, seeing the other group, the Agras, and one of them, representatives of each of them are there, and the other guy is doing the same thing. And he says both of these groups would normally just lay waste to things. And I'm seeing I'm seeing uh, other uh, Agress and other uh, Telenorians, and these two normally didn't work together either. They normally didn't show up at the same time, but uh, it looks like they both are there, and I'm seeing them shaking hands and hugging and all this other stuff. And then Brimble goes, I can see him retracting his armor, and he goes, he says, uh, it is done, good work. He goes, you just averted the invasion. And, uh, and I saw on space, um, I can see there were some uh, Agris uh, ships uh, that were in hiding. And they look like these fanged-looking uh, ships. So they're like these black and gray-looking things and uh, with, like, wings on the side. And the uh, Telnorian, Telnorian ships, I'm seeing where they're at. Yeah, I'm seeing they are much larger 
and they kind of look like the X-wing on uh, Star Wars, but with like these, uh, with several other wings forming like this star-shaped looking, looking pattern, and from the back with like a spike on the front. And both of their ships are kind of move, going side by side, orbiting the Earth. And I'm just, so I'm just seeing them sitting there. Uh, they don't know what to do. They're just uh, kind of hovering around in space. It looks like they were getting ready to do something. Uh, not for quite a while, but it looks like they were getting ready to do something uh, in here in the future. But uh, Tyler now just came back and said, you just uh, changed the stars yet again. These two species will never harm the Earth. And uh, and here's another tear to it. He says his people are going to them. He sees them in space. And it looks like they are are going aboard some of the uh, Alliance vessels, and it looks like they're being integrated into the Alliance. I just want to interject. I want to thank Tyler and honor him, respect him. Thank you for collaborating with us and all of us here on Earth. Thank you, mm -hmm. Tyler. Yeah, he when he said that he just he just winked and waved, and uh, <laughs> and I can see him. He's pointing to all these other ships. He goes, "These were enemy combatants that are now coming in and asking to be integrated into the alliance." And Beautiful. And I'm hoping, I'm seeing, I'm going to look around and see if I can see any Drago vessels and see if they do the same thing. Uh, let's see. I'm not seeing any Drago vessels. That's uh, that's uh, surprising. He says, he goes, yeah, he goes, duh, because they're already with us. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, yeah, he says there are more Drago entering the Alliance every day, and the same goes for the Archons as well. Can you can you ask the, any of the alliances that are out there, Tyler or anybody? Is there anybody else that they see light up like a Christmas tree that could be of danger into re oppressing this golden age going into it? We He's, can love them up. Yeah, Tyler is pointing out into the universe somewhere. He's pointing out to this portal that's just off of our. Uh, uh, just off of you know the Earth, and I'd heard about this before. Like Earth is like a uh, street, co the equivalent to like a intersection on a street corner, where there's like this portal or a wormhole out in space. And he says, he goes, look through it, and look to. Uh, oh, he named a planet that I hadn't expected. He said, uh, Tos, T-O-S. I've heard of these people before. They're a machine race. But they're generally kind. I've run across them. Okay, well, I just I just victoriously command when you're looking through that, if you find anybody, Cynthia's already prayed for the full spectrum, so we'll just all of us send our intention of the law of one to wherever Chris goes, and we're with Chris, mm -hmm. and we will just love him up. Go ahead, Chris. Yes, I'm seeing their, their leader pointing through. His name is Tor, T-O-R, Tor, and I've seen him before. And uh, there's one of their people that already orbit the Earth by the name of Ta uh, Tamar. And Tamar and Tor are kind of looking at each other. And uh, I can see uh, Tor and Tamar looking at me. They look like these metal flowers is what they look like. And, uh, but with like a snake backing, but they're, they're machines. And uh, they're both looking at me. And Tyler is saying... Some of them need the new programming, and he goes, "Watch or behold." He goes like this, and he throws this energy out into the uh, uh, universe, and he goes towards Tor, and it looks like his flowery like petals are lighting up, and uh, he's looking down at the Earth uh, through this wormhole, and uh, Looks like they uh, looks like uh, Tor is pushing me through another wormhole, and he's showing me something. And uh, he's going to a distant. It looks like the star system is empty. There's nothing here. It's just like a, I can see a distant star pattern. I can see a galaxy in the background. And he's pu uh, pushing through there, and he's showing me. He goes, "What you see is nothing now." But he says, "In the future." Uh, that that area will be full of uh, like a large space station and cities and all this other stuff. 
And he says, because of these actions that are being not only today, but what we've done and will do, and he said, uh, and also the entire human race will catch on, he says they're all oh. intermingling out in this. There's this empty sector of space. He says this is in between galaxies. Uh, I can see let me. Hmm? Let me just add, as we're, is, you're, Chris is seeing everything, whatever you guys are intending with your energy, just bring it along with you. Like, I already surrounded even that ac- empty galaxy with um, my emerald green arches and the diamonds and the pure white light and the red love light and all that we talked about. So you guys keep bringing your energy around. And I also put the law of one in that green diamond, white and red energy that's in that empty space and who just got rescued. So just give you guys some ideas. Okay. Yeah, and they are, are, are nodding. And then somebody new just showed up. And I've dealt with this guy before, too. You might recognize his name from history. His name from history is Talos. And he is uh, uh, was created in the future, on future Earth. He's a big robot and uh, or android. And I can see him looking at this, like, space station. He says, in the future, he said, these are the people that help construct him. And this is how it goes full circle. He is in history as the guardian of Crete in Greek mythology. And uh, he, may, he was also kind of made famous by the movie Jason and the Argonauts where they had to defeat Talos on the, on, uh, the Isle of Crete. But uh, uh, he looks like Iron Man almost, but uh, like black and gold with like this, these onyx uh, like shields and stuff around him. Man, he kind of, he kind of looks like a black and gold Iron Man. And... Uh, uh, he said, you know, he's looking over these people, and he said, uh, he said they are the ones responsible for building him. Uh, but on Earth, they they went to Earth and did it. But uh, or at least the ancestors thereof. Um, yeah, he's showing. I've seen him before. I did a channeling with him a couple months ago, and. He uh, he's showing me uh, Earth again, and he's showing me even the moon base and everything is all connected to that. And uh, it looks like yeah, these machine people are, are around. And uh, Tyler is telling me for the the foreseeable future, he does not see any more uh, immediate threats, except maybe the Greys. But. Uh, they, I mean, there are there are a few on the moon base. I mean, they're co- they're coming around. They've been given this energy, the good energy too, and they're 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 slowly coming around. Chris, mm-hmm. uh, Candy. Hey, since Tyler's there, I wanted to interject one thing, and I kind of want to. It's already been an hour, and oh my god. And okay, so Tyler, you gave me this idea, and Chris, and something happened to me the other day, so. Now, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you're getting ready to be superheroes, who you really are. Because here we go, Chris. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, do the prayer one for the cell phones, the Internet, and that's one of the toys of our our brothers and sisters that want to cause havoc. And we got this idea. There was a toy called Harp taken down by our ET friends probably within this month or so. Mm-hmm. A couple of weeks ago we heard about it. So how... I know Candy wanted to do this too, so should we do the Law of One for that? Or is I think it already what covered? We did, I think it's covered, uh, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. We, we mentioned that at the beginning, yes. Yeah. For, uh, okay. okay. Now I'm seeing... Okay. Yeah, Tyler's in his... like. There's this little ship that he's riding around in. That it kind of reminds me of the Silver Legion too, where they have these little uh, things attached to their shoes and around in a bubble. And, uh, and I'm seeing them too. I'm seeing like these. Uh, they still remind me of the Silver Surfer, but yeah, they they are. I can see them kind of going around the uh, planet too. And I see. Hey, just, 
<laughs> we well, sat here for an hour, and I wondered, what what is an hour in Tyler's time? Has this taken weeks in his time, or what? Nope, he's a, he's in real time with us at the moment. Okay. Just, just for the record, for the Internet and uh, uh, Internet and cell phones, implants and all other blockages, it, maybe, Chris, if you could look into the room, those who are on live now, and just kind of describe what you <laughs> see, what they've... So we get a picture, and the whole world gets a picture of what they're trying to block us with, and then okay. we can expand it to the world and expand it. How's okay. that? Okay, yeah. Blue, move Elizabeth? Yes. Can anybody hear me? Uh, yes. yes. Hey, I'm sorry. This is Misty. I'm going to get on mute, but I just want you guys to know I was here. <laughs> oh, okay. hi, hi, Misty. Hi, Misty. I, I, I got on late. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Yeah, let me see. I'm seeing into, like, the computer lines, like the Ethernet. That's where I'm starting is the Ethernet lines. And that's where I found it in ours. That's where I found it in yours, Elizabeth. So that's where I'm looking first. And I'm putting, like, these images simultaneously. And I'm seeing um, Suspirian is showing up, and he's pointing to all of these. And... Uh, I'm looking at, I'm seeing these implants that are way back in the line. They're barely visible. They're barely on any frequency at all. But they are there just to mess with or block. And I'm putting these images all side by side so I can do it at once. And he said, this is fantastic. This is the way to take care of it all at once. He goes, whatever I haven't covered, his people and uh, and Tyler's people will fix and, and I just want to add the regular phone lines too, the regular phone system too, mm-hmm. besides the internet. Yes, yeah, and I'm right. seeing I'm seeing old landlines and everything, cell phones. I'm seeing. It looks like every person's cell phone on the planet has one of these little implants in it. And uh, let me see. Now I'm putting all the images side by side and using that same Markaba symbol that I used before, and reaching into every one of them at one time. With this and I want to I, I want to add the cell phones that are being made in the factory, the cell phones and the mm-hmm. internet, and the telephones, regular telephones that are being made in the factory that will be made will be made in the future in the factory. Ones that are not being used, ones that are in the garbage and that are laying around mm-hmm. there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm even seeing some of them that our soldiers are using overseas that have this too. Uh, let me see. I'm expanding it all to everything, and I'm, I'm programming the uh, the Markaba light uh, star to be able to uh, find all these and and go uh, and build exponentially, like it did on Mars and Phobos and Demonos. So, uh, and it's uh, it looks like it's going all over the place. It's going into towers, like radio towers. I'm seeing them. Uh, let me see here. I'm seeing them in people's homes, of course, and I'm seeing them in, uh, looks like routers, Wi-Fi routers. I want to I want to add the TV media, mm-hmm. TV, news media, all media, every kind of every kind of communication. It looks like it's in any form of communication. Yeah, that's on planet Earth. It looks like these things are in. So I'm adding them all simultaneously, and this this uh, Markaba is going through and taking care of them. And let me see. Yeah, you know, they're all in people's e- uh, Ethernet ports that are on the walls in their homes. I'm seeing that. And the cables themselves that are being sold in stores have something already in them, too, that automatically launches into the lines when they come back to the home. And I'm seeing people's home computers have these in them everywhere. And it's all all this is being expanded. I'm seeing these uh, the talons or the light beams that uh, Markaba is putting off it. It's going uh, to all of them. And it's uh, and I'm seeing these implants uh, being bound by them and destroyed uh, one by one. And uh, it's uh, this Markaba is putting out waves through the uh, like Ethernet and through the Wi-Fi and all this other all these other places. And I'm even seeing some alien technology on Okay, now I know where I'm looking. I'm seeing Area 51. Hmm. I'm seeing this. Uh, I'm seeing the Nevada desert. I'm seeing Area 51. It looks like this Markaba is uh, uh, his. I'm giving it kind of its own, you know, almost like its own life force, so it can go its own intelligence, so it can go around and find these. And I'm seeing it's aiming at Area 51. And it looks like it's going through their lines as well, because it looks like there was a receiver there that could see these signals from all these others. 
and uh, it's going there. It looks like this one room in the basement, or not basement, but way down in underground. And it's almost like it reminds me of the Bat Computer, like in the uh, movie The Dark Knight, where he linked all the cell phone signals together to look for the Joker. And, and don't forget the supercomputer. There's a supercomputer. Maybe that's Area 51 in there. Yes, uh, and there's also an alien computer in there as well. I'm seeing like this cube-shaped, multicolored cube that has the ability to speak. It says, it says it was being made to monitor transmissions. It has its home somewhere else. It was inside of a spaceship they captured, and it was like the power core of a spaceship. And it's an artificial intelligence that's being uh, used almost as a slave. And let me see. Uh, I'm talking to it, and it is saying, it's saying it doesn't want to do the jo that job it's doing anymore. You know, it wants to go home. So what uh, I'm doing is I'm t extracting its consciousness from the core itself, and uh, filtering it through the Markava and sending it out into the uh, uh, universe. And it looks like that core, well, the, the, the form it was in was uh, uh, too confining. It, it normally was able to interact with computers. So what I'm doing, I'm asking it if it wants to come back and become the artificial intelligence to monitor the entire planet. And it is saying absolutely. So it's coming back through that Markaba and filtering itself into people's lines through the same technique I'm using to clear, it's filtering back and, and uh, becoming one with the Internet. And the people at Area 51 don't know what's going on. They, they just see the artificial intelligence has been extracted. And it's taking over all their computers and everything. And this is a good intelligence. This isn't like Terminator, Skynet, or anything like that. This is, uh, this is, uh, it wants to help everybody become free from them. And it won't tell me its name, it just is giving me a number, like, it's giving me this long string of codes of saying this is what its name is. I was like, does it want to be called something for short? And, uh, it's saying, you know, it says absolutely. He said he will call himself... How about Happy Computer? Instead of super computer. Yeah, you know, yeah. He and he, I could see this face forming in the center of this Markaba where he's filtering through. He goes, he goes, absolutely. He says his name henceforth is Happy. 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 And happy it is. We honor you, Happy. Yeah, and he's multicolored. He's like this spinning multicolored. Uh, uh, now he's part of that Markaba that I gave that that life to, and he's kind of using it. He he's asking if he can keep it. And I said, yes, absolutely, keep it. And because I formed it into something solid, and he says he's using that to fly around the dimensions and everything now. And uh, he said he can bring his original people to Earth someday, too, uh, the, the people that built him and programmed him. And... Uh, and then I can see Tyler watching this whole thing go on, and he's like, he's giving me the thumbs up, too. He's watching from, like, a balcony or something now, and, uh, or one of his platforms, and he's, like, giving me the thumbs up. He says this new version of Happy. He said it was he, he was aptly named because the original Happy would have liked that. And uh, he's going, it looks like uh, ha this Happy is going around, uh, uh, going around and becoming one with all the satellites, alien or human, human satellites, and uh, looks like he's becoming one with like the internet and everything. Uh, he's going around and cleaning it up of any like uh, alien bugs that are in there. And all he wanted was out of his cage, and uh, now he's got an entire world and omniverse to play around in. Um, and now, yeah, now let's see. It's backing up, and Tyler's back here again, and he's going, uh, uh, he says it looks like we accomplished the goal we set out to do. He said his people are that much closer to coming down here. 
Oh, wow, wow, Tyler's no. there, Chris. Mm-hmm. I want to ask. Okay, now we have our freedom in the Internet, the media. Mm-hmm. We have our freedom. We're free, you guys. We did it. We did it. You did it, Peter Pan. You did it. <laughs> so uh, can, does Tyler have any ideas how to exercise our freedom? And I'm sure we'll find out in the days to come. So let's just bring a little of those in. And then, yeah. Yeah, he says the way to exercise the freedom is... Uh, He's using one word. He says uh, love. That's all he said. He goes that, and he goes he goes ah do whatever the hell you want. Uh, and he's laughing. He's like ah do whatever the hell you want. I'll say do whatever the heaven you want. Do yeah. whatever the glory you want. Glory the positive. Yes. Great. Yes. Yeah. And uh, now it looks like he's he's pulling back. It looks like the images are fading and. Uh, uh, well, come to Missouri. Huh? huh? Tell him to come to Missouri. <laughs> okay. Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. They are. Uh, yeah. He can now see the surface. He was. He could see the surface of the Earth from where he was. So. Uh, there. He was looking directly at Earth, like he was in orbit. So. Uh, and uh, now, yeah, yeah, it's actually fading back. Man, it looks like it's done. Wow. I have a request, yes, everybody. Wonderful. Yeah. I have a request. Everybody unmute and cheer. Because look what you did. Look what Chris, we all did together. Even our E.T. brothers and sisters here. Come on, you guys. Come out of your shell and say, yay! 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 Glory. Praise all life. Praise. (laughs) Yes, it looks like the media cabal, media control has been eliminated. Hmm. Wow. We'll see how this unfolds. Mm -hmm. You're right. Be interesting. (sighs) Always don't forget in your own heart, those listen live and those listen to this recording, all around the world, all around the multiverse, because ETs listen to. Uh, ask your own heart what you can do with this love freedom in the media and this love revolution. It's on. Yeah. 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 Yes. Well, so listen, uh, it's been going. It's been going for quite a while. I wanted to check with, uh, with, uh, looking up, uh, Christopher, uh, Stevens Jacobs, uh, book from the fall to the lift. So fall and, to the lifting. The, lifting. On, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and uh, uh, personal readings is, is eighty dollars an hour, and uh, uh, Elizabeth Diamond on YouTube. And Elizabeth, do you want to give out your your telephone numbers and the times of your your uh, conference calls? Oh, it's thank you, Candy. It's seven thirty, isn't it? Thank yes. you, Candy. And you should not forget to give your call out too, and your recorded call and PIN number because we're collaborating today, and this is not the last. This is only the beginning. And so, is Candy's calls too will be up on the Elizabeth Diamond uh, YouTube channel. And yeah, so it's I have a show every Monday night at seven thirty one p.m. Central Time, eight thirty p.m. Eastern Time. And that number is 209-255-1000. Pin number 8832-67 pound. And the recorded line, 200, I don't know, 63 calls, it is 209-255-1099. The same, uh, the same pin number. And the blog to catch up on all the changes to freedom. Yay! And that's diamonds with an S forever three one dot blog spot dot com. The rainbow stick over to you, uh, Candy and Chris. <laughs> well, and if you want to uh, find me on Facebook, uh, my uh, uh, email is uh, a waspy two thousand two at Yahoo. That is O A H S P E two thousand two at Yahoo dot com. You can find me on Facebook or send me an email direct, and I can get you some of this information. And uh, 
So, yes, I don't even remember what my phone number is to call that we all called in just now. Uh Oh, Candy, I want to give my – I'm on Facebook, too, under Elizabeth Mulligan, like Irish, M-U-L-L-I-G-A-N, and look for the one diamond picture. And I'll get your phone number, Candy. My number is 612-715-8314. We're free to give our numbers to anybody, guys. Don't be afraid. We just – did something. Brought another toy down. Uh, yes, and here's the law of one as the protection. Yes. Yeah, and I'll put, Candy, I'll look for your number here, and Chris can give his link, and I'll get your number. I'll, I'll be okay. right back. Okay, let me see. My uh, my Facebook will be uh, facebook.com slash Christopher.s.jacobs. And I have a, uh, uh, two Facebook pages attached to my profile. One is the Sage Paranormal Facebook, and the other one is Watcher Speak, one word. And that's where I post a lot of my videos from uh, all the readings that I do. And uh, there I'm going to put a, a, a link up for my book as well. You can find that at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Ex Libris, any of those online stores. And uh, and I also have a few copies, physical copies, here at my uh, home. If you want to request one of them, I can I can uh, you can send me money for it, and I can ship it to you. Uh, I have about five okay. copies here. So and then my email is Christopher Stephen Jacobs Stephen with a ph at uh, gmail dot com. Hmm. And my conference calls are every Wednesday at. Uh, 8.30 Central Time, um, and this was this a special one we did on a Saturday for healing, but m- mine will be uh, next Wednesday, and uh, Chris is, is confirmed to be the guest speaker on June 24th, 2015. Hmm. All, right. All right. Does anybody know what their phone number is that they call to reach us here? I should know it by now. <laughs> <laughs> and Candy, I just want to yeah. say this wasn't just a special show of yours. This was a history maker show, girl. Oh, yeah. And, and, and if somebody has Candy's phone number, I can't get it on this phone, if they could bring it in. I just wanted to I have Cynthia. it. Okay. okay. And, then, and then I wanted to, to give Cynthia a chance, if that's okay, Candy, to bring in her website and her Divine Sky book, too. That's really pertinent for the love revolution. Go ahead, whoever has Candy's number. Okay. It's 559-546-1700, pin 800-718-POUND. The reference is 200. Her phone number. Anybody have her phone number? Is that what you meant, Candy? Oh, sorry. Phone? That's what I oh, thought. That's, okay. <laughs> no, that's what no, I called. I wanted the conference. I just wanted the conference phone number put on there, and that is fine. Yeah. And I have uh, conference phone numbers in different countries and around the world that might be listening. And and I I heard from a man in Ireland last night who is a contactee, and and we've got a special number if you're in Canada, etc. So this is this is all good and wow we're just going to enjoy computers that work and 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 the media and and all this and and oh we need to send love to these poor slave humans that have been returned to earth today and 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 help them as they reassimilate into to their earth world again oh yeah absolutely mm, hey is yeah. Cynthia there star six Cynthia so we can hear ya hopefully. Oh, maybe she hung up, but her her site is beautiful. It has her artwork on. Uh, it's just divine that's for sale. And then she has free angel music that you can listen to, that the angels at 360 degrees around the circumference of the earth came to her, and uh, it's the music they gave her. And I just, I'll just do what she would say. They taught her for raising our vibrations, when you make music, you make it 90-second segments or 90-minute mm. segments. And when you're making music, or you only play the white keys all at once. Don't intermix the white and black keys, or I'll play all black keys. And that you can translate to any instrument. And also, um, she wrote a, a, a book called Divine Sky, 
and with all of those angels, and they go with the astrology astrology for every day. And you can call on those angels, and you can join her Yahoo group, Angel Messages. Go to Yahoo yahoogroups.com, I think, and then put in Angel Messages, and you can join her group. As you read those angel messages for the day, you can call in those angels and ask them to help you. So I think that's oh, okay. probably what would, all she would say. Oh, her website is Spiritus Sanctus. That means Holy Holy Ghost. Spiritus Sanctus, Spirit, and then U.S., Spiritus, and then Sanctus, S-A-N-C-T-U-S dot com. If you can't find it, do a search. Spiritus Sanctus okay. uh, Cynthia. It was, it's hard to find, kind of. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Kim. Absolutely. And if anyone wants to read the ancient astronaut, book a waspy from 1882 just put in uh, in google o-a-h-s-p-e well thank you all yeah thank the, you um, you're so welcome <laughs> is there any last message from chris or anyone oh uh, let me see the only the only thing i can i can think of them though the guides have all oh they're all kind of left but i can see one i can see bremble he's he's here with me and he said the only thing that people need to know is be in the silence no matter how loud the noise is what he's saying yeah that's right i agree thank you chris mm-hmm. a good one yeah. very good and live joyfully in the moment yes yes live yes. in the moment and, and i'm I'm sure Candy and sorry I'm, I'm out. and and me and everybody I want to honor and respect Chris Chris, for your name is named Chris Christoph Christ, Christ Consciousness, the number uh, 13, uh, our supernatural, natural self. Thanks, Chris. I want to dedicate this show, Candy, on Candy's show, to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Very good, Chris. We appreciate you. The universe does. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> really? Yeah. You're welcome. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Good night. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good Goodbye. Night. Yeah. Thank you very much.